Tastemakers in the watch game like Gear Patrol have called their ceramic watch material almost magical and deemed their adventure-ready Cali Diver Automatic GMT the best sub-$500 dive watch, full stop. It's our friends at Movement. A Movement watch is built to run with precision, purpose, and X factors needed to make the best of the time you keep. From their best-selling automatics to innovative ceramics to more clean, inspired designs. Find your new movement now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. Yo, I feel like Atlanta is one of the only places, well, the only place that I see. The strip club is, is like, it's just crazy. Like, every strip club, first of all, Cheetah, right? Yeah. It's like, what, like a four, five-star restaurant? Cheetah is a, yeah, Alluvia is the only five-star restaurant in Atlanta. But Cheetah isn't really considered a strip club. It's more so considered a titty bar. Like they have like in Detroit and shit like that. Oh, okay, because because like, they don't get they don't get all the way naked. Okay, and you can't. Well, I think as of like maybe about a month ago, they just started letting the customers and the patrons throw money. Because before, like a month ago, if you threw money, they put you out. Yo, that's crazy. Like I come to Atlanta, niggas is like yo, the strip club got the best food. Then I hear about Cheetah, niggas is like nah, that food is a one. I'm like. Yeah, it's the, the only five star restaurant in the city. <laughs> like at the strip club, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh man. Y'all but ready? then it was like when the fucking, when the pandemic hit, like, and all the out of town people started coming. It was like before Cheetah was like a chill spot where you could go duck off, even if you're gonna bump into somebody, it's not a big deal. But then when the pandemic happened and like all the out of town niggas came. They started having shootouts at Cheetah and, like, all kind of shit. Just fucked it up. Now you got to go through a metal detector. It's, like, a whole big thing. Like, that shit was just, like, too much. Damn, man. Let's get... Let's, we ready? We can get this thought. Let's get it popping. I thought we were filming. Oh, man. Oh, we were probably, but... Let's officially get it started. What's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast in the building. Shout out to everybody that's uh, locked in right now. Make sure you tune into the audio. Make sure you uh, subscribe, like, make leave a review, all that five stars. So you you rocking with the boy, man. This guest right here is one of like a legend. I'm gonna cry. Like I mean, no cap. Like oh all God. this is is genuine. Y'all know me, yo. When I do my my when I do do the intros, is all genuine. This chick right here. I'm getting misty. Is so not nah, like nah. Real talk though. Like, no, I'm serious. I'm a cancer. She's I like, just cry anyway. So yeah, yeah. Like, see that? She is like probably if 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 I can describe it, it would be you know how I say everybody need foundation. You need the foundation to start something or create something. Got to start with the foundation. She's like a brick in the foundation of Atlanta. Like period. Like am I am I like do I have it right? Like I've been here for a year and maybe a couple months. And when I was, I, we never really got introduced, uh, like legitimately or whatever. But when people were set, talking about you, they always like, nah, Jade is that girl. Like she really is Atlanta. If you're looking for somebody that's Atlanta, talk to Jade. Like no cap. So like, I'm like, man, I just want to get to know. I want to know, know my way around. I want you to just give me some game. Yes. You know, I'm a journalist too. At the end of the day, so I, I kind of want to know. Yeah, we are where I'm media at. personalities. Yeah, so I want to yes. know where I'm where I'm at. What's going on? Is there anything that I need to know about Atlanta? Just being a journalist, like, and I thought you were the perfect person to come to. So, everybody, Jade is in the building. What up, gang? Hi, everybody. Gang, gang. What's up, gang? Yo, you are. I yo, I love your come up. Like, I, um, I was talking oh to God. uh, I was talking to um. Please don't kill me, guys. Mandy yesterday. Yes. Mandy B. And I was telling her, like, like she's, like. I love her. You feel me? Like, yes. she's really a staple in podcast culture now. Yes. And, like, you are that in, like. Shout out the, to Horrible Decisions. Facts. You are that in the culture alone. Right? And, like, I was like, man, I got to talk to Jade. Because, like, first of all, people I feel like women don't get there. They just do. You're right. But I feel like you are one of them people that like you can't really not give it. Like, is you feel me? Like you can't not give it to you. If that makes sense, like you is you are you got it already. Like you took it. You feel like that? Do you feel? Or you still feel like? Um, I feel like in a lot of ways, being a female in this industry is extremely tough because whether or not you want to admit it, like even outside of the industry and in most major aspects of life, women and females are the ones that are going to make sure 
everything runs smoothly mm. and they're going to make sure that, you know, like all the business gets handled. They're going to make sure that you're fed. They're going to make sure that you fucking make your doctor's appointments and that you get to the dentist on time and that you make your flight and that your fucking kids get birthday presents and your wives get fucking Valentine's Day gifts and, mm. you know, all that kind of shit. But at the end of the day, there aren't really any awards for that because women are kind of like, I feel like expected to be like natural nurturers. So mm. people feel like and assume that, okay, yeah, they went above and beyond, but like that's what they're supposed they to do. do. You know like, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's not really like that big of a deal when at the end of the day, like if they didn't go to that above and beyond distance, your life would fall apart. Mm. But do you feel like you get yours, your flowers? I feel like I do sometimes. For real? Sometimes? Sometimes, but it's like, I get it from, I know this might sound crazy, but I more so get it from, I get it from, like, my immediate circle, like, all the time, but now it's, it's coming, now that, like, I'm a media personality, like, when I go out to the grocery store, when I go to a restaurant, or, like, if I'm jogging in the park or something, like, People are coming up to me with not just, oh, my God, like, you know, you're Jade and I love your podcast or I see you with all the celebrities or whatever. They're coming up to me now with stories about mm. how certain situations that I've touched on when we did a Big Facts Friday edition, when it was just us and we were just talking our shit or whatever, has helped them through a situation that they've had in life. Mm. And that's that kind of shit is what really matters to me, because knowing that I'm able to help somebody get past the point in life that they didn't think that they were going to be able to get through, that means more to me than any dollar amount, any fucking celebrity picture, any kind of accolade or any other thing that could come my way, like, honestly. It's crazy because I ask you that because as an outsider, I feel like you do, and I'm going to tell you why. When I, so when I got introduced to the podcast, mm -hmm. I'm not from Atlanta, I'm like, okay, I know, I know DJ Scream. Right. E even... I didn't even know who Black was. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but, like, people were telling me, like, that was in the hip-hop culture, in the community or mm -hmm. whatever. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, it's just those two, right? Yeah. And even on the intro, they need to add your name. But They did. They did? They added yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, but when I came to Atlanta, immediately, like, I mean, they like, oh, nah. Nah, Jay belonged there. Like, like people in Atlanta know. And I was curious to know, like, when you when you got on the podcast, did you hear the mumbles of who is this chick or was it you already knew you you belonged there okay so here's here's how i let me let me <clears> just go back to how i even got on the podcast in the first place so um a few years ago like me and black used to do this party every year called the no cap party mm -hmm. and the first one that we did um big bank big bank yeah the, i'm sorry yeah, for, the people, yeah, for the people that don't know Big Bang. I'm naming um, niggas like I know niggas. <laughs> like, who am I? I'm talking, calling this nigga black like I know this man. Right. Um. So the first year that we did it, everything was cool. Everything was going great. But then the night of the party, there was like a blizzard, like a, a huge snowstorm. Atlanta's never seen a storm like that at all. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking like, man, we need we need to cancel the party, like whatever, whatever. But everybody was like, nah, nah, you know, it's cool, whatever, whatever. Man... Everybody and they fucking mama came out in the blizzard. Niggas wrecked on the way there, didn't give a fuck, left their cars, came to the party. Like, we sold out. The booths were $10,000. Fucking everybody came. Nobody wanted anything for free. Thug bought a booth. Future bought a booth. Fucking baby bought a booth. Like, everybody came, and we partied in that bitch until, like, 4 or 5 in the morning. Damn. And we came outside. It was still snow. Like, it was crazy snow. But then... The next day, um, I can't remember which album it was. Future was dropping his album, and he didn't do any interviews, but he, he set up the with, Apple Music thing, yeah. and you know, it was a one on one with him and yeah. him and Bank. The um, ah, uh, the uh, his label, the um, Free Band, yeah, uh, Free yeah. Band Radio, yeah, 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 yeah. That was the first ever, you know, what I'm saying, edition of Free Band Radio or whatever. And I know a little something, bro. You know, yeah. So, <laughs> so Black was like, even before that, Black was like, you know, we need to start like a show or something called the No Cap Show. So we went. I went around. I got like drops from like all these artists. Everybody like Baby, 
Quavo, Offset, Take Off, Everybody, Long Live, Thug gave me a drop, um, fucking Yachty, Money Bag, everybody gave me drops, like, this is an cap show with Big Bang, Jade, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So another year went by, we had another party, but then they had a, they had this little war about who started the no cap word and all this shit. So Black was like, man, I ain't fucking with that shit. Yeah. Let me figure something else out. So then Scream came and was like, we can do a podcast and we can call it Big Facts. And that way, every nigga that comes on a podcast is going to have to basically tell the truth about whatever it is that we asked them. So it's not going to be like the commercial shit, like the rest of these podcasts, whatever, whatever. So Black was like, okay. So Scream was like, I'm going to put it together. All you got to do is pull up. So my role in the podcast was getting the artists, getting, getting the guests, them there, right? you know what I'm yeah. saying, whatever, whatever. But it was like when we would film, the artist, you know, like, okay, say we're sitting in a room like this, and I'm like, it's, it's here's the platform. But right, like, I'm, I'm sitting over you. here. So it's like when they were talking to Black and Scream, they would inadvertently, like, talk to me off camera. So when we would edit it, that it'll look like they'd be talking to like a ghost or some shit. And right. you could hear me, but you couldn't see me. So eventually one day Black was like, bitch, you're not finna keep like laughing and talking <laughs> to people like on the side of my shit, bitch. Just pull up a chair. Mm -hmm. So we tried it one day. Cause you know, I'm not really like a in front of the camera kind of person. I like to just be behind the scenes, do my job, put the shit together and you know, leave it alone. But I pulled up my chair and the shit has been up like ever since. But did people like again not not Atlanta right? Did yeah. you did you hear or see the mumbles of like who is this chick? Yeah, of course. And for me, I I just wanted to, to to ask that because for me, like again, outside of Atlanta, yeah, I'm like okay. I thought she, I thought she was cool because I'm at first I'm like I'm a, a journalist. I was always an interviewer, so I thought right, she was cool right. Because I saw like how the questions, how people gravitated with you, but I didn't understand why. When I touched down in Atlanta. I feel like the people made it known why. They was like, nah, nah, Jay is, no cap, I'm not making this up, bro. I'm like, damn. So for me to hear that, not being from here, yeah. from the streets, right? Like, essentially, that's what they would say, from the streets, me hearing that from the streets. Yeah. I feel like you get, I feel like you get your flowers that you deserve in Atlanta. Yeah, 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 for sure. But it's like, sometimes there are some people that don't know no better. Yeah, that for lack of a better way to put it, don't want to give it up. And those are the people that motivate me to go even harder. So mm. to the point where, like, eventually when I get finished, you're not going to have a choice. You're doing a hell of a job. How did you get into that space? Like, just because even when you said we, I got the drop from Thug, I got the drop from Baby, like, you, you skipped the whole level. Like, how did you even get into that <laughs> space to be able to be like, yo, Thug, yo, Baby, like, yo, like, how was, you feel me? Yeah, um, well, like, I really, like, came up with most of these people, because you got to understand, like, a lot of the people that are, like, for lack of a better way to put it, running things in the industry now are from Atlanta, mm. so being around and, you know, seeing people and, you know, doing business with people and, you know, doing other things with people, like you build a rapport and you build a relationship with them and you become gradually family over a certain amount of time. Mm. But the way that I got started um, in the industry, um, there used to be a lady named Juice who had a nail shop in the West End. Um, I used to get my nails done, but, like, I spent crazy money with her, like, Every other week I was spend I was in high school like spending two, three hundred dollars on my nails and shit. So she said she decided that she wanted to start a magazine. When she started the magazine, um, like she was like a big sister to me, so she put me like over the marketing team and mm -hmm. we were trying to think about what would be like a good way to do it. So we were like, fuck it, we're gonna have an all girls marketing team. So we went and recruited like interns and shit from the college and all that shit, and it was crazy because I was recruiting these interns, but, like, all of these people were older than me, mm -hmm. but they still respected my direction and respected my words to the point where, you know, they listened and we were able to, like, really create something great. And then um, one night there was, like, this big party at the club, 
Um, we had like a table set up. We were giving out. We had done like one issue of the magazine. We were giving, you know, had the table set up, giving out the magazines. And then I see like these niggas come. So I see the niggas like pulling up in like Rolls Royces and Porsches, Lamborghinis, all kind of shit, whatever, whatever. So, you know me, I'm thinking business like, okay, I can get these niggas clearly have money so I can get them to buy some ads in Mm. the magazine for the next issue. So um, one of my homeboys was with them and I told him, I'm like, bro, I don't know who the leader nigga is, but I need to meet the leader nigga. And the, the leader nigga is crazy. Yeah, like, I need boy. to meet the leader nigga. Like, the nigga, nigga that, I'm the leader. <laughs> that makes the decisions so that I can sell some ads for the magazine and get these niggas some exposure. So he was like, bet, I got you. So they come out of the club. He um he tells me to come here real quick. So he I come here or whatever, whatever. He introduces me to the leader nigga. You keep saying the leader nigga. The leader <laughs> nigga turned out to be Big Meech. Oh shit. Wait, so like <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? Yeah, so like um, Oh, you want something you want something? Else? <laughs> yeah. Yo, wait, you just Yo, <laughs> I was not expecting that shit. Yeah. You want something else to drink? No, I'm I God don't, no, damn, I don't need like, <laughs> out of all names, I'm thinking like you said big me. Okay, my yeah, bad. Yeah, so like so he introduced me to Meech. Um he introduced me like to everybody else, the rest of the guys, J Bo, Baby Blue, um, everybody, twin, like all of them. Um, and I gave him my sales pitch right on the spot. Like, we have a magazine, um, I see you guys have an entertainment company, you know, you guys need exposure. We have a magazine. I'm here to help. I can blow you up. Like, what are we doing? He was like, how much are the ads? What, or whatever. So I was like, well, I had to think quick on my feet. So mm. I'm like, you know, the ads are like 1500 But, you know, if you give me 2500 I can put y'all on the cover. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. We can have a photo shoot. Blow it up. Whatever, whatever. Make it make sense so he can want to do it. Yeah, this nigga gave me 5000 And was like, um, call me tomorrow. So, you know, I'm looking like, okay... But it was only, he was like, no, 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 just keep it. He was like, just call me tomorrow. We'll put the shit together. He was like, I'm drunk. I'm finna, I'm finna go to the house. Oh, I'm like, okay. So I called the next day. Um, we get the photo shoot set up. He was like, you need anything else? I was like, hell no. Nah. You gave me like 2,500 extra dollars. Like I'm finna stretch this shit and, you know, make it do what it does. He was like, nah, nah, that, that other money was for you. Like, just let me know what it is. I'm going to send the money. Just tell me, like, where we need to pull up, when and where, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. So we did the photo shoot together. Um, we actually had his artist at the time was Blue Da Vinci. And um, so we put Blue on one side and we put Tip on the other side, um, T.I. Yeah. on the other side or whatever. So this was, like, around birthday bash time. So we actually dropped the magazine, like, during birthday bash. So... They wanted to do, like, a whole run or whatever and a whole, like, a big coming out because it was at Lakewood at the time. And um, Long Live DJ Nando, we had, like, a we went and bought a booth. We went and bought, like, two booths outside. Nando was DJing. We had a block party, like, inside a birthday bash. Like, we were giving out all kind of shit, like, shirts, fucking magazines, money, all kind of shit, whatever, whatever. But the big thing was they were able to get Blue on the stage so when they put Blue on the stage, he had Meech had this idea like, okay, we got to do something that people are going to remember. So he was like, we need to make it rain over the stadium shit or whatever, whatever. So I'm thinking like, how the fuck we finna make it rain like over the stadium? He was like, you going to go up in a helicopter and drop the money. So I'm like, huh? He was like, we gonna, we, we gonna figure this shit out. Just give me, give me a couple of days. We're gonna figure this shit out. So he ended up giving me like $20,000 in ones. And the helicopter, he arranged the helicopter and did everything, whatever, whatever. So I went to the, I went to the, the clear port. I got in the helicopter with the helicopter driver and we flew to Lakewood Stadium. So when we started dropping the money at first, it was kind of like we were having a problem because when I was dropping the money, when he was like leaning over to drop the money, 
the money was flying up into the propellers and oh, like chopping shit. up. Okay. So that was like the first thousand that I threw out. So the helicopter man was like, "What we're gonna do is I'm gonna lean this way and you're gonna throw the money this way so it won't go into the helicopter and it'll actually like drop down during the performance or whatever." So we did that. We flew around like probably like fifteen or twenty times. I threw all the money, whatever, whatever. So the helicopter man was like asking me like, so you're not going to like hold any of it? And I'm like, no, like he gave me all of this to throw. Like, why would I, I'm not going to cuff the money. Like yeah. that, that's not why I'm here. Like, that's not the purpose. So he was looking at me like I was crazy. We flew back down. I drove back to um, Lakewood. And like when I drove back to Lakewood, like, I'm sorry, everybody was talking about, oh, my God, like, it was money in the sky, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And, like, I never said anything about, like, me being the person that was, like, throwing it. But that was, like, the talk of fucking Birthday Bash that year, like, the money that flew out the sky when he was performing. And that was, like, the most craziest shit that I've ever seen in life, like, for real, for real. And from there, everybody, like, I want to get next to Jade. I want to get next to Jade. Yeah, but, I mean, it was, like, I didn't, you know, I'm not really, like, a, am not really a, a big on the scene kind of person. I just, you know, I just like to do my job and just kind of be there. And if you need me, I'm here and I can pop out, do what I need to do and then pop back in. You see what I'm saying? Like That shit crazy. They ain't putting you in a, um, in a show. They ain't gonna, they need to put that scene in the show. They ain't even got to Atlanta yet. I'm about to say, they need to put that scene <laughs> in the show. That shit crazy. Like, yo. Yeah. That's legendary. God. But yeah, damn. like Meech, Meech was a, Meech was an incredible, extremely intelligent, amazing amazing person like for real for real so you was able to see you're not that old but we hear this term yeah. new Atlanta you was kind of able to see the transition into that yeah but that was like the Olympics what was 96 what was that 90 no they when we did that that was like that no was I'm like saying when was the when was the because uh, they called new Atlanta after the Olympics right That's oh yeah, they, yeah yeah that was like what 90, 96 96 yeah you was able to see the transition of the new I was, like, in the sixth, seventh grade. So you was able to see the new Atlanta. Damn, that's... That's... Damn. Yeah, like, yo, like, damn. I'm speechless, kind of, like... Yeah, like, it was... That was... Those were some of the best years of my life, honestly, I swear. Like, there's there's nothing that'll ever be able to compare to that. Ever. It's like, I'm... Honestly, it's like talking to the... The, the down south nori like i watch like drink champs and i'm like this yeah, nigga yeah yeah is she got so many stories because like he was with these niggas and yeah. like talking to you like it's like damn like <laughs> you said yeah they pull up in lamborghinis and shit it was big meach and the leader of the group was big meach i'm like the <laughs> fuck wait hold the fuck up like the fuck? oh so you know big meach personally on the yeah. name on the name the name basis like yeah nigga yeah damn so you was able to see like at one point in time in hip-hop culture Cause I'm relatively new in this, like seven years, mm -hmm. right? And even now, I still don't. I don't really listen to everything. I don't really care. I'm to yeah, myself. Yeah. Just being honest. <laughs> I got into this shit late. It is what it is. Yeah. You was able to see the transition from top five being damn near every artist in New York to like damn near being every artist in Atlanta. Talk to me about that for a second. Like, when did that change? And are you able to even recall these moments being in it? I guess. So I'm gonna give you a New York story. So we had to go to New York um, one summer for Jeezy to shoot the Soul Survivor video. And you know, he had like Cam in the video, he had everybody in the video, but that same night, um, Jewels and Wayne were shooting, I can't remember the name of the song, but they had a song where they were like sitting in the classroom, it was like a black and white video, whatever, whatever, so. We it wasn't can't feel my face, was it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, we were we were at the Soul Survivor shoot, <clears throat> and like a baby blue Maybach pulls up. So the Maybach pulls up. It just kind of sits there for a minute, whatever, whatever. So everybody's kind of looking like, who the fuck is this? Because, you know, every, everything is on high alert at all times. So, you know, so Misha was just like, you know, nah, chill. He's good, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. The door opens and it's Jay Z. Mm. That's he gets crazy. out, you know what I'm saying? It's him and Tierra Marie. So they get out, you know, <laughs> they come through, you know, they, you know, chop it up, whatever, whatever. And then they pull off. But it's like, I think 
around the Jeezy time is when Atlanta started to everything started like shifting. The Jeezy and Tip time is kind of what I feel like brought the music scene back home. Dang. Honestly. God damn. So and then you had and then you had like, you know, Gucci was coming out, you know, it was like it was really kind of like bringing it back to Atlanta, but at the same time, also outside of the Atlanta artists, you had, like, Trick Daddy was going crazy. Like, mm. it was just the South, period. Yo, that's crazy. I think so. I mean, honestly, it sound like, not to sound too crazy, not to step out that too far, it sound like Meech was kind of, like, in the middle of helping that, that this culture sure. really become what it is. And Definitely. Damn. Because he... Even though he wasn't from the South, that's where, like, the home base was. And that's kind of, like, what made, even though he wasn't an Atlanta nigga, that's kind of, like, what brought a lot of light to Atlanta, the moves that they were making in the city. Let me ask you this then. Mm -hmm. I was looking at, um, this is, like, outside of culture shit, but I'm just curious. Yes. I was looking at um, Omi and the Hellcat. Right, I think he just got like sentenced to uh, a few years. I think like what? That's a scammer, nigga. Yeah, like okay. five years, something like that, um, for like uh, cable fraud or some shit like that, right? And my Piracy thought process, or some shit. Yeah, yeah, but my thought process is like, here we got this man doing the wrong thing before the betterment of so many people, right? right? And I'm thinking about as you talking about Big Meech, it was like for him to bring so much positivity. In in the culture, right? Yeah, he definitely changed lives. Right, but for it to be around the wrong thing, I'm trying to worry, right? It's it's kind of like crazy, almost, if you think about it. Because it's like, bro, like, it's so many people out here who got good money doing the right thing, but ain't doing the right thing with it, if that makes sense. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. politicians, motherfucking, uh, any, any, everybody, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like people got money, ain't doing nothing with it. You got this dude... Making money, however you make money. Spreading the wealth. And it's spreading the wealth. And then we take them away from the culture to lock them up, put them behind bars to take it away from us, if that makes sense. And all the shit dried up. That shit. Left. It's like, it's kind of like, not to, I'm not trying to be on my soapbox, but it's almost, it's just kind of like, as a culture, as a black people, like, the moment we have some light or the yeah. moment we have hope, they take it away from us. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's it's just, I don't know, it's just weird. Like, it's just weird. Damn. So you having all these connects, I guess it it kind of makes the conversation easy for you on a, on a show. Yeah, because it's, because there are, there are certain things that I can touch on and certain things that I can speak about with certain guests that might not be able to come from, you know, like, you know, it might not be. It, it'll be received differently coming from somebody they know else. You. Just like, just like when we did the Birdman interview. Like, I've been on Bird twenty years. Like, I've stayed at his house. You know, like, I've done plenty of business with him. Whatever, whatever. So when it came time to ask about the Wayne thing and the kiss, um, I that was kind of like on me to do that because mm. there's a level of respect there. But my main thing was I wanted to, I'm a journalist, so I know that I had to ask the question, but I wanted to ask it in the proper way so that he could understand that, like, I'm asking this because this is what the people want to know, not how everybody else has done it, like, trying to troll you on some, like, weirdo shit. You see what facts. I'm saying? No, facts. So. All right, so I'm, I'm going to be going, take it, take, bear with me, because I'm going to be going everywhere with this. In those moments, though, right, being a journalist, mm -hmm. understanding that we got to ask those hard questions. Yes. But sitting across from somebody that probably don't want to be asked these questions. Yeah. How hard that got to be? I feel like people do not understand. They don't. It's extremely awkward and extremely <laughs> uncomfortable. Oh, my God. Because it's like you know that you have to get it out. But even all the way up to the second of the delivery, it's like, fuck, am I going to fuck this up? Like. Mm -hmm. Is this going to go left or like, what the fuck? Like, but when you have a, when you have a certain, I don't want to say a certain standard about yourself, but when you have like a certain image about yourself and people know that like, you're not on no corny shit or like not on no weirdo shit, 
even though you you're still thinking like I hope they don't take this the wrong way. They already know, the like, first, you're yeah, not coming um, from a malicious place facts. or you're not coming from, like, a weirdo place. You're coming because this is something that you have to do because this is a part of what this whole situation is to get the information out. You know what helped me sometimes? Sometimes. Barely. Like, well, you I, close your eyes and think about them being naked? No, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> No, nigga. I told you about that shit. You be horny, bro. You be posting all that shit on Instagram. Like, have you seen? <laughs> no, I don't think about nobody being naked, nigga. Um, no. Nah, so what I do is I say, I tell niggas like, yo, I gotta talk about this. You feel me? Like, yeah. It ain't. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. Yeah. Me personally, I think I was talking about this with uh, fuck, thug nephew, B slime. Yeah. And I was telling him, I honestly. How hard it is, I think that's some of the, the realest shit to do, because I feel like it's easy. Niggas could say everything they want behind somebody back, huh? How hard you say how hard what is to like ask somebody a hard or like an uncomfortable question? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's some of the most real things to do, because mm-hmm. everybody on the internet got an opinion about something, right? But when somebody in your face, you gonna keep that same energy. So it's like I think me personally, I think those are man conversations. That build character, in my sure. in my opinion, I feel like this interviewing shit is is kind of the, some of the hardest things to do because like when somebody in your face and you gonna ask all these questions about everybody else, but when you, when they there, you gonna ask them like, "Yo, Birdman, so knowing that nigga really can touch you right now." Yeah, that's yeah. some. I think me personally, I think that's probably one of some of the um, realest shit you can do. Yeah, I agree, <laughs> and it also it kind of like it builds a different type of relationship with the actual person because you it kind of opens a different door facts with you guys so and and it's it's like i i live for the tough questions because it's once you once you get it out it's easier yeah. to carry on with the rest of the shit no nah, facts you got a hard part out of the way yeah now we can we can enjoy the conversation now we can get into it yo like, you know what i hate though what do you hate niggas it's like people don't want to talk about the shit that's relevant it's like bro this is why you hot to be honest why don't you want to talk about this? Like it don't even make sense. Like you come, what else we can't? What else you can't talk about? You can't talk about your music. And what's going? We don't care about people. Don't care. So it's like, yeah. like people like we don't want to talk about. Bro, just don't talk. Just don't have to interview them. Like, yeah. I hate see, that, that's bro. that's a, that's another thing that I like that I don't really like care for is like when we have people and they say that they don't want to touch. They don't want to talk about this. They don't want to speak about that. Whatever. Whatever. But all the shit that they don't want to talk about is all of the shit that is current, is the reason that like they're we want to interview. interviewed in the first place. Like, <laughs> like yeah. yeah, like they like they don't want to talk about this relationship or this person's fucking what they got going on with this person and all the shit. But I'm like, bro, that's that's all that's been over all the blogs for the last six months. You don't want to say anything about it. No, that's facts. Speaking of journalism, I definitely want to give. Uh, Screen his flowers. Yes. For him to be like, yo, we want Black and Jade. I want Black and Jade to pull up. Let's do a podcast. Yeah. And I think even before that, well, I don't know if it was before that, but he had even seen Poor Minds before a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Before they was on 85 South Show, he had them on his shit. Yep, yep. He got that ah. He might have to be the A and R. Yeah, Scream, because it was like, it was some shit. Like, because, you know, like, me and Black don't know how to do, like, none of that technical shit. Like, all the behind the boards and all that shit. All we know how to do, like, we barely know how to, like, screw these mics and shit together. So Scream had to do all that. So Scream is, like, the brains because he's the one that knows how to do the equipment and, like, everything like that. So when he was, like, all Black had to do was pull up, Black was like, fuck it, let's do it. Mm. Because Black thought he was bullshitting at first. And then he was like, pull up. And then we had, I think our first guests were Moneybag Yo and Black Youngster. He was like, pull up. So Black pulled up, and he was like, so what I got to do? And Scream was like, talk, nigga. Like, that's it. So how and did then y'all, it went from there. How did y'all get the revolt deal? You just made a call? Was it like that for real? So we have a mutual friend, um, Corey Jacobs, who's Diddy's senior advisor. Um, and a really important thing about him is he just got out. I want to... I want to say, I think, from doing, like, 17 years or something. And he stayed solid, kept his mouth shut, did his time, came home to a bag. Like, 
and a position, like a real position. So anywhere Diddy goes, he goes. He handles a lot of um a lot of stuff with the company and he also has his own company that he's that he's doing now and they put like chess boards inside of the prisons. He's doing some stuff with like the HBCUs. He got a lot of stuff going on. So, um Black hit him one day and was like, Man, he was like, We need to put this shit together. Mm. So Corey was like, Give me a second, I got you. And we gave him a second. And he got us. We signed our paperwork, did our photo shoot, and here we are. What was the numbers at the time? Do you know? What numbers? Like the YouTube numbers. Um, I want to say we were at like a couple hundred thousand. Mm. See, I'm I'm looking like, all right, where do I need to be at before I start? Because <laughs> I'm like, this is game. Yeah. Damn. So y'all was just able to reach out and make it happen. Some niggas be working for years and years. and Yeah, we were blessed. We were overly blessed when it came to that. Like, it. that's why it always pays. Like, whenever somebody tells you it doesn't really matter who you know, that's bullshit. Because who you know is everything mm. and can skip you past a whole bunch of steps. Mm-hmm. Like, for real, for real. So, basically, get back out here and network. Mm-hmm. That shit don't work, bro. Yes, it does. You're not about to sit up here and cap no, but it does sometimes. It can possibly work. It can possibly work. Yeah, we're not going to discourage no, the networkers. Fact. 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 We're not going to discourage the networkers. But like, can we be real for a second, though? Yeah, we can be real for a minute. I like that. So how much bull- It's I feel like it's so much bullshit in networking. <laughs> Talk to me. Be real. Be real with me. Give me game. I'm here. I came to get game from... You feel me? Like, you be real. That shit... I feel like I th- <laughs> this is my opinion. I think um, I'm listening, Jay. Issa Rae said it the best. What she say? She said network across, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of times we go in the room and we want to network up, right? And when we try to network up, people not they don't give a fuck about you. It's just, they everybody trying to network <laughs> up. So like you are just one of the million trying to get my attention. Nigga, everybody in here trying to get my attention. Yeah. The problem with me is. I feel like <laughs> the people I be trying to network with is really across. They just don't know it yet. Well, because they don't know me. Like, you feel me? Like, yeah. they ain't see it yet. They probably seen it, but they don't know it's me. But but we networked. Boy, I wish you would tell these these people these lines. Like, <laughs> so we didn't network? You one of the people I'm talking about. <laughs> Jay, oh listen. Do y'all hear this nigga, bro? Oh my god! Am I lying? I never told no. Listen, we met, right? Yes. You ain't know me. I did not. Facts. But a didn't year... I hug you and fucking? Now you show love for sure. No, no, I'm, I would never take that away from you. You show love. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Every time, like I keep it. Hundred. Every time. I ain't never gonna. No, nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take that away from you. You show love. You wasn't doing no stiff arms. So you wasn't. You wasn't. You gave me your number. You ain't never answered it, motherfucker. But you gave me your number. <laughs> Give me a number. But I feel like a year later, it just happened to be like somebody, one of your artists was trying to do an interview. Yeah. And that happened. But again, you didn't know that I was, you feel me? I, like, I, I, I promise you I didn't know. Like I know you didn't. When, until you fucking text me, and then I see the shit from <laughs> last year, That's and I'm crazy. like. <laughs> how, many, how many text messages was, like, was it? Oh, my God. How many messages was it? It was a few. It was a few. <laughs> I love this. I'm being real. It was cute. <laughs> no, it's cool. I love it because I be telling people all the time. Like people think I be like, bro, I don't have no pride. I text, I will hit. and tell a nigga tell me no, I'm going. Like it it's, was a few. It's don't stop. Even even after that, like it was still a stretch to get here, <laughs> but we're here, Facts. and 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 we're gonna fucking we're gonna go further and do a lot more shit. Facts. But um, talk to me about the. The in between the 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 net, so people say networking is important, but I just feel like again I feel like it's bullshit in there. But what would you? How would you describe it? So I would describe networking as basically getting your face out there. Because my thing is is like if you never would have networked with me in the first place, I never would have seen your messages from last year. Okay, and so I would start over. Yeah, so it's like a. <laughs> That that was kind of like a foundation. a name to face a foundation and a name to face recognition. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you got to set that foundation first. Yeah. You might not get it right then and there. Right then, but it's going to happen when it's time. I ain't mad at that. I don't like it, but I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. For real. I, nah, that's some real shit. That's that's some great advice. And so, then you got to, you got to, lot. nah, but like, I've had people do this to me before, like, put me on the spot. Like, I gave him my number or whatever, like, a long time ago. And then I see him again, but I don't remember them. And they'll be like, well, I met you last year. Da, da, da. I was like, okay, well, you know, just shoot me a text or something, whatever, whatever, so I can remember who you are. And then they'll be like, okay, hold on. And then they'll, like, shoot me the text. And then I'll see the last year's message. And I just have to, like, apologize because, like, I be having a lot of shit going on. And I, if I'm not immediately, like, remembering or aware of what exactly it is that you're trying to offer me, then I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not paying attention, mm. but it's not going to register as immediately as somebody that is offering me something that I know that I'm going to need. Mm. Just being real. All right. I want to reset for a second. Um, Let's go. All right. You know, it's woman history month, mm-hmm. right? So I'm again, uh, I've been doing all women this month. Let me drop my all woman. Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah. So you are. It's been a stretch. It's hard, but whatever. You are a woman in this space. You've been dominating this space. Like I said, I feel like you get your roses in um, Atlanta, mm-hmm. but you feel a little different. Yeah. How often do you feel like you get overlooked in the space that you're in? Mm, it used to happen more so like I don't want to say back in the day because that's like. That's making it seem like I'm super old. But, like, when I was first coming up, it used to happen a lot more. But another thing, too, like, with me is, like, in a lot of instances, even from back then until now, a lot of times, like, I'm the only girl, Mm. like, with all the niggas. So I stand out, and that's kind of, like, another thing that grabs people's attention because – even people that don't know me, like, when they see all these niggas and then they see me, they like, the fuck is this bitch? Like, you know what I'm saying? Trying to, like, figure out who I am and what I'm doing and, you know what I'm saying, if I'm fucking one of these niggas or, like, if I'm, like, really working or, you know what I'm saying, whatever. So it's just kind of, like, it's kind of interesting. Like, but like I said, it used to happen a lot more, like, back in the day versus, like, currently. But do it still happen now? Mm, kind of, but it's kind of like I feel like people have a better understanding of, who I am and what I do, so it doesn't happen as much. I was so when it do happen, I was just wondering because you're on one of the biggest podcasts out there, right? Thank like you. mine, I'm, I'm I'm climbing and shit like that. It's good. Your shit big. is overly big too. Like, no, no, for sure. I, I ain't going. Your shit is popping. No, nah, like, I ain't going. I ain't going under. I ain't going downplay my shit. But I'm saying like Big Facts is like one of the ones that I look to like I inspire to be next to. To be real, it is what it is. I can't numbers don't lie. Yes. Being one of the premier podcasts. Mm-hmm. Is it frustrating sometimes when people overlook you and it's like, nigga, like we next to y'all. Like we when you when y'all pull them screenshots of top ten, we right there. Sometimes it is. I ain't even gonna lie because it kind of like it makes it. I don't want to say it makes your effort seem your hard work and your effort kind of seem like whatever. But another thing that that I had to learn, too, even with dealing with just life in general, is that comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. So when you compare yourself or when you get frustrated when people don't recognize your worth right off, it kind of distracts you and takes away from what you need to be doing to make sure that the next time they understand, for lack of a better way to put it. All right. Don't give me that Eric Thomas bullshit. That was good. Give me the real, though. In those moments, right, when niggas, like, trying to play or whatever, only you know the moments. Like, what's going through your mind? Like, how does that, like, how are you really feeling? I know how we supposed to feel. I know comparison to Thief of Joy, but we human. I be wanting to go off. Mm. I be wanting to go off. But I have to, like, when another thing that I had to learn, too, is, is that in this industry, when it comes to, like, females in this industry, a lot of women are already automatically prejudged as being overly emotional Mm. from the beginning. So if I snap at every nigga or every bitch that has something to say or that didn't give me my credit, then 
I'm going to be labeled a problem because I don't know how to control my emotions. Mm. And when it comes to the men that are in these higher positions that have the power to either promote you or demote you or, you know, make sure you get to where you need to be or hold you back. Um, I'm never going to not speak my mind on something that I feel, but I have to take into account the way that I'm speaking my mind so that it doesn't come across the wrong way. Mm. But at the same time, I'm never going to let anybody disrespect me. And if I have to, if it's like a do or die situation and I have to take it there, I'm going to take it there about my respect. Mm. But I have to keep it to a minimum on a daily basis because at the end of the day, you know, I don't want to come across as the problem. Mm. That makes sense. So it's a few, few, far, few and far between the people that overlook you, right? Yeah. Let's talk about the rest of the people now. Mm -hmm. How does it feel being a black woman in the space that you're in? It feels great. Mm. What does that mean to great. like other black women, if you had to say? So if I had to say something to other black women, um, basically it, it took a lot for me to get to where I am, and I've been through I've been through too much shit, like dealing with people and you know shit that I've had to go through to be able to be as successful as I am. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is never let anybody discourage you and never give up mm. because there are going to be tons and trillions and thousands of people that are going to try to tear you down, that are going to fucking backstab you, that are going to really try to cut your throat. But you have to understand that your purpose is way bigger than anybody that's trying to stop you. Mm. And you can't, you can't let that jar you. You know right. what I'm saying? You have to stay strong and keep going, basically. Now, I ask you, what does it mean to be in this position? You said it means a lot. Mm -hmm. If you could go deeper, I know it's a lot, but, like, go deeper. Pause. When you say deeper, what you mean? <laughs> Bro, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yo, why you like this? Expand. No, I'm saying, like, so. Enlighten me. When I'm, so a lot is vague. Right, so you mm -hmm. say it means a lot. What does that mean? What what is a like? If you could give me words to describe what a lot means to you, when I say, "Yo, Jay, you're amongst one of the biggest podcasts in the world," mm -hmm. right? Have some of the biggest guests in the world. You're the center of this podcast. People love who you are. You've came such a long way. You have so many relationships, great relationships with the greats, best artists. I mean, so many women look up to you. So many people come up to you trying to get your name or your number. Sometimes an autograph, pictures with you. Mm -hmm. And I say, what does that mean being in that space as a woman? Okay, so to me being in that space as a woman, I can correlate the it means a lot to I'm sure how it felt when my, I don't want to say necessarily my ancestors, but my older African Americans were able to go into Macy's and shop or mm. go and sit down at a restaurant and not have to go to the colored section or go to the dealership and buy a car. You know what I'm saying? Like that that kind of breakthrough is what I meant by it really means a lot. Damn. Because there are a lot of people in this industry and a lot of women, black females in this industry that did way more than I've done and didn't get a chance to nearly do as many things as I've gotten a chance to do. Mm. And that's like a really big deal for me. And you was able to do it being you. Exactly. That's probably the biggest. Exactly. Like we look at the stories like, uh, I always, it's probably a bad comparison, but I look at the success stories between Monique and mm -hmm. Oprah, right? So like Monique, she was, she was in um, Precious. Mm -hmm. I think she won an award for that with the grant. I don't know. I don't want to misquote it, but a Grammy. I don't know. I because I, I don't know if she won it. Can somebody <laughs> fact check that for me? They Did do she... Oscars for movies. Oh, and shit. Oscar. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I don't know if she won an Oscar. I don't I doubt know. I it. think she wasn't she nominated or yeah, something. Yeah, I just know she okay. got a lot of attention for it, right? And I got a chance to meet her on the set of BMF last year, and she's she's incredible. I believe it. Incredible. But she got a lot of backlash for basically speaking her mind. Right. Right. And you look at people like Oprah. And hearing Oprah's story, 
Oprah had to endure a lot of pain and she didn't really speak up on a lot of things that she she wanted to yes. because she felt like it would be it would be a downfall of her career. Mm -hmm. And you look at where she got to it and I look at it and I'm like, damn, it's a shame that women or people in general, right, mm -hmm. have to kind of like hold their emotions in and not speak out on the wrongdoings because other people can really block you Better from in a higher position. You, you get yeah, what I'm saying? They like they can really like blackball you kind of. Mm -hmm. And I was just like when I hear your stories, like the fact that you can make it, like you said, right back in the day, to the to the Macy's or to the water fountain, the that's, fucking lunch you, counters, or you feel you, me? the dealerships, or fucking the front of the bus, even yeah, the like, front of the bus. That type of shit, like, is really like major for me, and that's the type of shit that I absolutely do not take for granted at Facts. all. And the the most important part to me is the fact that you can, for the for the analogy, to keep it on analogy, you can make it to the front of the bus being yourself. Yeah, you mean have to. Act like I just some... think I thank God, and I know I know this might sound weird, but I thank God every day that like I didn't have to fuck to get to where I'm at. Mm. That I didn't have to like change my image. I can wear my sneakers and shit, and you know what I'm saying still go in a meeting and you know still get the same check. You know I can do it's it's certain things that I didn't have to change about myself that will still allow me to elevate. Mm. And I, I I thank God for that every day because me changing who I am or having to fit into a box would have been the death of me, mm. honestly. Yo, I want to ask you this because this is the first time I met you. Mm -hmm. I think it was Metro Woman birthday party. Mm -hmm. You was with the the tallest shit, all white, got the gold locks, I think, like stood out. Nah, his hair was pink then. It was pink, yeah. Yeah, because he had just dropped the album. So like, like everybody see Thug and I'm like, Damn, you was with him. Y'all had y'all really close. All the shit going on right now, man. Like, how does that make you feel? That shit like hurts my feelings. Mm. It really like hurts my feelings because it's like, hmm, because it's like at the end of the day, he's such an amazing person. And is he's not just like an amazing person like on camera. He's an amazing person to anybody that encounters him. Mm. And anybody that's around, anybody that has been in his presence, anybody that could even possibly think about coming into his presence, he overcompensates for whatever's going on mm. and like overly makes sure make sure that they're straight. Like even like his immediate family, like he overly takes care of them. He loves them, his kids, everybody. But if you're in his space and you're close enough to be around him, then you're a part of that family. Mm. It's not like an extended family or, you know, a homie or, you know what I'm saying? No shit like that. Like your family, there's no question about it. And to see to see what they're doing to him right now, like, that shit hurts, man. Like, that shit really, that shit really hurts because it's like, regardless of, you know, whatever they're, he's being accused of or, you know, whatever, whatever, or whatever people's opinions are or whatever at the end of the day, he is, he's, he's probably, I want to say one of the, one of the one of the realest and one of the the most honest and one of the most caring is lame and it's an understatement mm. but whatever is like the genuine. biggest probably genuine genuine oh definitely but whatever like a synonym for caring is that is like 10 times whatever caring means and 10 times whatever like fucking the best person in the world is like he's definitely that mm. And to see him, like, to see him fucking in handcuffs and shackles and shit, like, going, having to go back and forth to court and, you know what I'm saying, all that, that shit, like, that shit is, like, that shit is super lame. That shit is super lame. Because he took care of everybody. And, again, like I said, like, I, that shit is just fucked up. That it, shit is just fucked up. Outside of, like... If we could separate 
this statement from his situation. Mm-hmm. It seems like like I'm just one for like to try to like look at things on a bigger picture. It's so messed up. Like even what like we think about, and again, I'm not like the most political thing. So like if I say right. anything wrong, just judge it to my brain and not my heart. But like you think about back in the day, we we watched Snowfall, right, and how the government mm-hmm. dropped crack inside of our our neighborhoods, right, and then they they look at us like they. They put laws in, in in order to lock us up, and 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 basically put us in shackles for something that they they dropped off on us. Like, what do you expect? Right? You put a liquor store on every fucking corner of the hood, and you wonder why so many people are drunk. alcoholics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like. And the same with like just outside of that, we think of people that's that grew up in these bad neighborhoods. It's like we ain't have. It's almost like we ain't have no choice, right? Yeah. We had to escape poverty however we could escape poverty just for us to be judged or looked down upon right. from the decisions that we made to basically get out of a situation that we that we ain't put ourselves in. And, like, part of me, like, because I'm going to be real, like, part of me is like, man, I understand how... The things, and again, this is, oh, this is the, a statement on its own. Mm-hmm. How the things we can do affect other people, but I also because I came from the hood, yeah. right? Yeah. I also understand like how we're just trying to make it out of our situation, out of our environment. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't. I always look at like even when we talk about the big meat thing. It's like, man, it's just crazy, bro. It's just crazy because like a lot of a lot of times you see kids and they don't have no other. They think they don't have no other choice. Or no other alternative. No other alternative. And it's like, man, that shit is fucked up, bro. That shit but is. I just feel like, I feel like a lot of people, like, taking Thug out of it, but, like, when it comes to, like, Meech and the other scammer nigga that you were talking about, the the Hellcat dude or whatever, mm-hmm. I feel like, okay, I get everybody has to be punished for their wrongdoings or, you know, whatever, but I feel like if, the government was smart they would understand that these people have a bigger purpose they give them a job yes and they they would understand okay if they were able to turn this into that then we could use them to turn that into all of this you mm. know what i'm saying like and i don't know that should just be Bro, i ain't scared i'm gonna make an unnecessary but bold statement i feel like niggas like Omi and the hellcat i feel like niggas like that are super superheroes because yeah. at the end of the day, man, this man probably never seen as much money in his in his in his work in his, in his life, right? Right. And his family probably the, the way it was going probably would never see that. And because he took a stance, his family probably will never starve again. And honestly, like as a man, I ain't gonna lie. Like I I don't wish jail on nobody, but sometimes I'd be like, man, would I be willing to do that for my family? Because I feel like that's to me that's a it's gonna sound crazy, but that's an even trade, bro. Yeah. If I as a, I feel like that's what our job, our duty is as men to make sure our family only, good. He only got what, like five years. But even worst case, even if it, even if it was more, it's like, bro, if I could, if I had to, if I had to trade my life for my family life and my family family life, I feel like that's what a man should do. Yeah, I agree. Like to be honest, like that's a bold statement, but I just feel like that's what makes you a man. Like that's what makes you a character. Like sacrifice. what are you willing to do? Yeah, what are you willing to sacrifice for the greater good for everybody? It ain't about just me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I look at niggas like that like, man, bro. They deserve an award. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know it's, it might be messed up to so many other people, but, bro, them other people wasn't giving my family no no money to help us out. Right. You feel me? So it's like, I, I don't know. Their opinions that. weren't paying our bills. Nothing. Like, when we were starving, like, niggas weren't giving. Like, I didn't take anything from you. Like, so why the fuck do you care? Like, man, facts. So, I mean, crazy, that's just, man. Like. People don't count with me, but fucking I don't like that. Shit is is what it is, bro. Like niggas like that deserve an award for real, a Grammy, Oscar together. Like, if you could put it together, like fuck it. Like, yo, do conversations? Like Oscar facts. Like <laughs> get that nigga, get that man, whatever. Yo, do do conversations get hard or do it get weird when you might have guests that is on another side that you might not be on? Yes. Like you might be cool with one side. So. I've been in that situation a, a few times before, and Who was it? um. So when we did, I don't want to say this nigga's name, 
the guy, he's like an older gentleman, um, and he's very erratic. Um, Charleston White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get it. When you did the Charleston White, and then <laughs> so. You know, I did my research and, you know, I I did my, my my due diligence and all that shit, got my questions together. But the day of the interview, um, I was just looking up some like some more little like last minute shit. And then I saw the thing where he was talking about um, doing some unwarranted sexual acts to the Caucasian women. Mm. I'm trying to say it so they don't flag it, but, like, when I saw that, I'm like, what? Like, but then when I saw the when I saw the clip of the shit, he was walking in for us to do the interview, so I had to try to fix my face, but it was, like, it was on me. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't help it because right. cause when I saw the clip, it was like, did did he really just say that? So when we got into the interview, I was trying to hold it, hold it, hold it. But then it came out and it was kind of like, I kind of, I'm kind of mad at myself because I let my emotions get the best of me. But it was like, I still had to get to the bottom of that. Like, what did you really mean by that? And like, why would you say something like that? And what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Like type shit. But it was kind of like, you know, he spoke his piece and we talked, um, after the cameras cut off and he gave like a deeper explanation or whatever, but it was just like, that was kind of like, that was kind of whatever for me. And like, like black had to like explain to me, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, like we're not here for feelings. We're mm -hmm. here to basically get a job done and it's okay to feel how you feel, but don't let that Not emotion like overpower your intelligence mm. as opposed to, you know, us doing our job and us sitting here with an attitude because we don't like something that a nigga said. If we don't like something that a nigga said, then why are we here? Facts. Like, type shit. Yo, uh, so I seen a, um, an interview with him when he was saying what he meant by, uh, when he say fuck Nipsey. And I thought... We the, asked him about that too. I thought the explanation was lit. I'm not gonna lie. I thought he broke mm -hmm. it down so dope. But my question is really like, where do we draw the line from clout you know what i'm saying like i get you can explain it and it makes good and it's good for clickbait and get get the viewers and things like that but, but where do we said, draw the um, line he said when we interviewed him he said that he was a character yeah he's about he loved everybody loved his, his real name yeah you know what i'm saying yeah he oh. said that um he was a character and basically like he makes most of his money off of youtube or some shit so the more he characterizes himself the more money he makes. So for all the shit that he says and does and all of the fucking crazy erratic shit that he has going on, it's not doing anything but driving. The more attention we pay to him is basically like the more money we're putting into his pockets. Mm. And until people stop paying him attention – they're not gonna stop paying his pockets. Why do we draw a line with that shit? Like, I'm. You know, um. That shit is like, part of me get it, like, but some shit. Even with the, uh, he be talking about kids, people with kids and shit. Yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Fuck I just, this. I don't really, I don't really pay attention to it, so I couldn't really tell you all a lot about it, but, um,. It's like it's just like a lot of some shit, a lot of shit is off limits when it comes to when it comes to just like real nigga rules. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like I don't know, like I don't know, like it's just a lot of shit that like me personally I wouldn't touch on mm. because of you know just the way I was raised basically. Yeah, no, so, a lot of shit. I don't know. I think this is weird, man. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Um, yo, when sure. you going? When you going to drop your uh, your network? I feel like you can drop a network and like get really go crazy. Um, 
I'm working on it. It's it's in the works, and um, I have another like another thing that I'm doing with Rico that we're putting together. So again, I can't really, I still can't speak on that yet because we're still getting the paperwork and everything. This finalized. shit y'all told me. Yes, but um, we'll 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 be able to like speak on it like really soon. Yo, you whatever. really be doing what you want. Like you be you be in the room with uh funny Marco. Y'all be doing the uh shit together. Bro, you just do what you want, bro. Like, that's crazy. I'm, I'm jealous, bro. Like, how the fuck? Like, put me in a game. But I love you, though. No, no, I'm not really jealous. That's But you really do what you want. What do you do outside of podcast? Like, what would you call yourself? A and R? Like, what do you like? So I do artist management. Um, I do label consulting. I do events and parties. And I'm just a, a dot connector, I guess. You just lit. Like, I'm trying to be your best friend. Like, how can I, like... We're already best friends. I feel like you go out too much. Didn't you just call me twin earlier? I hate that word. (laughs) Why do you hate the... Why do you hate the twin word, Fucking little kids be like, you're twin, my twinski. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) (laughs) You made me pinky swear. What the fuck is this, man? (laughs) Like, yo, pinky swear. (laughs) All real niggas have the pinky swear to me whenever they tell me that they're going to do something. No, you told me you was going to do something. Yeah, and I'm here, aren't I? yeah, yeah. You hear, you hear, you hear, you hear, you hear, you hear, you hear. Yo, who else, you, who else you be managing? I feel like you got your hands on everybody. I work with everybody. Like, so how can I be, like, like your best friend? Like, Bro, we're twin skis. I feel like you go out too much for me. I hate outside. No, real, real nigga shit. Like, I used to be out seven days a week, but now I only go out when I just absolutely have to go out. Like, they have to drag me out of the house, like, to go. I hate oh. being outside, bro. Niggas be like, yo, Jay, you gotta get outside. Fuck with niggas. Like, I don't fuck with people. But you gotta start fucking with people. Wow. You gotta start fucking with people. Niggas are fake. Yeah, they are. But you're gonna run into them outside of being outside. So you might as well go ahead and bump into them outside and get it over with. You can see a fake nigga. At the nail salon. I do need to go to the nail salon. He's still a fake nigga. But if you see this fake nigga outside, then that'll eliminate all the extra chatter when you get to the nail salon. Mm. All you can do is, a, you know, a hi and a bye, what's up, and then leave it alone because you already saw this nigga outside. Yo, you ever, like, you ever interview people like that you didn't want to interview? Yeah. I was wondering if you went to the other Like, yeah, don't fuck it. I have, but again, like Black told me, like we have a job to do, so there's no place for like emotions. Not nah, facts. In this shit, like for real, for real. Not nah, facts. So. Yeah, I, f- I appreciate you pulling up, man. Um, this shit You're was so hard. very welcome. Nah, man. It's my pleasure. I nah. couldn't wait. Nah, yo, you really got a lot going on. Like, I feel like, I feel like niggas know. I feel like you don't really get a. Like, do you do interviews? Like, what the last time you did an interview? This is probably gonna be my second interview that I've ever done in life. I seen the one. No, nah, that wasn't an interview. That was just some shit. You were talking crazy. No, you weren't talking crazy. You were talking some real shit. When you was like, um, that shit was going crazy one time. When you was like, girls should get up at three o'clock and make her. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't yeah. be doing interviews. I feel like you deserve you your like flowers. You're you're the fucking you're you're the pioneer of the fucking baby Jade interview because this is matter of fact, this might. The other interview I did will only qualify as like a half of an interview. So this can be my first official interview. What do you mean? It was like a kind of like, it wasn't like a, like a, it wasn't like some shit set up. It was like I did some like TMZ shit with somebody one time oh, okay. and it was like, okay, they caught me coming out the club with a whole bunch of niggas and asked me a couple of questions and that was it. But this is like the first real actual interview and uh-huh. you are the fucking messiah I broke your um your virginity. Yeah, I feel I feel like you you when you came here before you were saying that. I was talking to my niggas like yo, yo you 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 win bro. A lot of niggas really don't fuck with niggas. I think you said the opposite. You was like, we do. <laughs> no, you feel like they do or you they don't. I feel like they do. Because everybody here not from Atlanta basically. Nah, it's like because. Out of town niggas kind of have like 
forced themselves on the Atlanta niggas. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a cooperative cohesion mm. of niggas. All right, so being from Atlanta, because I'm just curious, if, if I was from Atlanta, I would probably feel this way. But you're lit. Do you ever look at it like, damn, I can see how somebody would be mad? Because it's like out of town is coming, they get lit. When Atlanta got so many people from here that you can kind of back. You feel me? Like you could kind of like back this person. He's from Atlanta. Like these niggas not even from Atlanta. Yeah. Do you you, 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 you think about that? Like, yeah. Damn. So basically, like, Atlanta not real for real, like, a bunch of... No, Atlanta's definitely real. Don't fuck Not Atlanta, Atlanta. Don't do like, my city. No, uh, not Mr. your JL. city. Not your city, but, like, Atlanta as we see it. You mean with the out-of-town niggas mixed in? Yeah, it's just a bunch of, like, clout chasers. No, no, no. I don't want to say clout chasers. Atlanta is kind of like a, a melting pot of out-of-town fondue. Mm-hmm. Is it doing? Is it doing more good for land? Is it doing less good? What you think? They are blowing me the fuck up. Who is that? That's your man. Uh uh uh. <laughs> you, got, you don't got a boyfriend? I got a couple. No, I you know a situation. Like entanglement. Hmm. Hmm. Why well, I sound like your lip shake when I ask you this question? <laughs> Oh, you ain't want nobody to know that? No, no, no. I'm I don't have anybody to answer to. I'm just chilling. I'm just you know, I'm Jade. I'm just, you know, here. What I mean? I'm just you know, I exist. Mm, so if he calls you and you and you dub his phone call, would he get mad? He who? He is he. You said you got a He who? You said you got a little entanglement. Who is he? I said I have a situation. Mm. He who? You tell me. Is it no, rapper? you tell me who is, is he. Is it a rapper? Fuck no. You would never no. date a rapper? No. I heard no. rappers got money. I got money. Fuck, I care about a rap nigga mm. having money. All right. So you would date a regular nigga? When you say regular, what do you mean? Nine to five. Every day is hype. No. I mean, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> there's nothing, no, there's nothing with wrong you, with nine to five niggas. <laughs> No, nah, don't be safe. Don't be they're safe. They're really cool. I know a lot of them. That you just, you just you just want to date them. Not really my type. Oh, so now nine to five got a type. Nah, like nine to five. Nine to five people really don't have a lot of time to do shit outside of the nine to five. But entrepreneurs do. Entrepreneurs have a different type of time. Mm. Uh. Nine to five is really just a small window. Entrepreneurs work all damn day. Yeah, but entrepreneurs work all damn day on their own terms. Is it really on their own terms? Mm -hmm. If I had an entrepreneur, you an entrepreneurial nigga, mm -hmm. as opposed to a nine to five nigga, I could call it an entrepreneurial nigga. And say, hey, at three o'clock, let's go, go to, to Cheetah meet. at four. And he could meet me at Cheetah at four so we could go have lunch and, you know, I could give him a hug and he could go back to work. A nine to five nigga is still going to be on the clock at four and he won't be able to leave until five. And when he leaves at five, he's probably going to be tired or he's going to have to go home, change clothes, do all this shit, whatever, whatever. So I would rather not interfere with the nine to five nigga schedule and just deal with the entrepreneurial nigga who's always ready at whatever time. You said it. Not you. Stand on it. Yeah. Jade, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, B. Simone. I'm just oh, like, God. Hey. Yo, you are fucking, you are nuts. You are a real piece of work, Mr. J. Hill. Yes. Girl told me she didn't want to date a nigga with a 9 to 5 because he couldn't just get up and go to Jamaica. No, I'm not that superficial. I mean, cheetah, Jamaica. I mean, I don't know. It was one no, of those, I mean, it I mean, was it was like no, 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 potatoes, no, potatoes. No, like no, no, I was no. just, you know, like a, a cheetah, Jamaica, same thing. Tomato, tomato, like you said. I like mean, you know, it was just an example. But like I said, it's nothing wrong. No, 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 no. Don't go back on it. No, no. I know. appreciate you for pulling up. Everybody, everybody, make some noise for Jay, bro. Come on. Oh my God! And now I look like a monster. 
<laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. J. Hill. I appreciate you. Yo. Oh, my goodness. No, nah, this is all, y'all. I appreciate it, man, for real. All love. Yes, all love. I had uh, a really great time. Thank you for I coming, I can't wait man. to do this again. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for you to come again. Oh. And that, we got to do that again. What? The shot. You want some more? Come on. No, no, no. We're, I'm cool. You sure? Yeah. Because I got to make it to where I got to get to tonight. Hey, wait, where you going? Um, they're having a um, They're having a birthday party for Keed, and then... You should come tonight. They're having a birthday party for Keed. And then Scooter has a show at Onyx tonight, a single release party for his new single, Come Eat With Us with ESTG. So I can come with you? Yeah, you can get in the car. You want me to send you a driver? How you like what you want to do? So I can just be like, yo, I'm uh, I'm on Jade list. Why just call you when I'm outside? Yeah, I ain't got no list. I'm with Jade. Nigga, let me in. The fuck? And it's going to happen like that? I, you lie so good. I love you. No, I cross my heart and I hope to faint. That's the honest to God truth. I'm going I'm to be, you know how niggas be at the club and be like, yo, Jade, I'm outside. <laughs> <laughs> Red. No, all you have to do is tell the people, like, you're with me. Everybody can say I'm with Jade. What the fuck? <laughs> Come on, you cat then, bro. No, I, oh my God. Baby cap, God. that's it. That's your nickname. <laughs> Baby Cap, everybody. Like, what, nigga? Like, I'm going to just come in there and be like, yo, I'm with Jay. They're going to be like, I bet. Come oh on. Oh, my God. That's what they're going to say. Are you serious right They're going to be like, call her. No, like, I'm going to, hey, my friend from Baltimore, Maryland, or D.C. No, I'm from Baltimore. Whoa. That's crazy. That's worse than <laughs> Cheetah. The Is Cheetah it? shit. That's worse than the entrepreneur shit. Damn. I thought it was like not all the same area tri-state shit. Like, no. I'm just joking. I know it's not all the same. You shit. cap, baby cap, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, nigga, you can get in my car, get in my front seat. All right, now nah, I got this. Truck. I got this one other. Um, they pull it here now. You trying to bring a bitch with you? No, no, no. Can you go downstairs? Um, grab uh. Oh, okay. Because I was about to say. I mean, you know, if she's with you, then I'll make an exception. But I usually don't do bitches. For real? I don't. No. You just you provide the bitches. No. You can be the only one. Yeah. You selfish. No. You selfish. Mm. Baby Jade, everybody. Hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> J Hill, J Hill podcast. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh God. Yo, we done, bro. Yes, it's we a wrap, bro. It's a wrap. Nice to meet you guys or see you again. Oh, my Whatever. <laughs>